Hi everyone, welcome back to the Elusive Panda. On this episode, we're going to be restoring some old film. So this is a really interesting set of film. I have these slides I purchased at an antique store and these slides are travel slides that were somebody bought at the Wikiwachi Springs. It's an attraction in Florida that has live mermaids. If you've, if you've ever heard of that, they have women wearing mermaid tails who are underwater and they use hoses to breathe and they, they just do sort of a little show and, and make an attraction. And it's been open since 1947 uh, and I think it's still going. But anyway, I have these, these Panaview slides and this is the kind of thing you would buy at the, the gift shop uh, when you went there because your photos might not be so good. So you could actually buy a set of slides to put in your slide projector. And these are nice six by six, uh, 120 film slides. But as you can see, or as you will see, they've degraded quite significantly over the probably 50 years since they were made. The, the slide itself is taken on an almost entirely magenta cast. There's still detail here and uh, we can restore it, but it's gonna take a little bit of work to get the colors to look good again. So let's let's take a look at that. All right, so I'll go ahead and open the file. What you're looking at here is a digital scan of this slide, and this is a very flat scan. So this is exactly how the slide looks when you hold it up to the light and look at it. And it's the contrast is kind of gone. The colors have kind of shifted really badly. And sadly, a lot of the gift shop slides that um, were purchased back in the mid-century time period are, are like this. The film was kind of cheap, and so as a result, all of these have aged really badly. Um, but fortunately, we can, we can digitize this, and then we can restore it. So I'll show you some of the settings that I uh, scan at for this purpose. So I scanned at a pretty high resolution. Um, it's about 7,500 7, pixels on a side. I forget what the resolution of the scanner is. Um, I think it's probably 4,800 pixels per inch on my, on my film scanner. And the reason we scan so large is because it minimizes the amount of grain from the scanner and makes it easy to work with small details in these files. And then when I scan them, I also scan them so that they'll be 16-bit files as opposed to 8-bit files, just so I have more data to work with. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is just find a way to restore the color and get rid of that magenta cast. So when you have really, really difficult color casts or color balances, um, there's a type of there's a type of color balancing, a type of white balancing you can do with curves. So what I'm going to do first is add a curves layer, and then we're going to individually set the blacks and the whites, or rather the lowest and the highest values of each channel in the curves layer, red, green, and blue. So what I mean by that, and we'll start out with the red channel down here in the curves panel. So if you look in this little panel right here, you'll see the eyedroppers. There's a black eyedropper, gray, and a white. And this is where you can set the, the lows and the highs for that individual channel. So we'll take the black eyedropper, and what we're going to do is we're gonna find the darkest part of the red channel in this image. And to do that, I'm going to select this tab down at the bottom. You can see how that changes the, the red curve the very lowest point of it. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key while I do it. And now what you're seeing is it's going to show me when certain parts of the image start turning black, those are the darkest parts of the red channel. So I'm going to look for a spot as I slide it and hold down the Alt key that's going to turn black before everything else. And there's a point kind of over here, it's down by her hip in the shadows. And I think that's gonna work really well. So I'll probably zoom in, get really close, hold down the Alt key again and pick one of these spots. And I'm going to click in that dark shadow spot. And so that set the lowest point for the red curve. 
But now we're going to set the high point. You can see it's already looking a little better. Now we're going to take the, the white colored dropper and then we're going to go to the opposite end of the red curve and grab this white slider. And that would make everything very red, but we're going to do the same thing with the image. Hold down the Alt key. And as we drag it, it's going to gradually uh, turn red as we get to the brightest thing. So I'm looking for the point that turns red before anything else. I think it's going to be right up here on her shoulder, on her shirt. So we'll zoom in right here. And I'm going to click kind of right in the middle of this spot. Well, I've got the Alt key held down so I can see where it is. Okay, so now we've set the red channel. Let me show you the difference here. So already we've taken a lot of that magenta color and by reducing some of the red, it's already starting to look a lot better. It's still a little bit cool right now. So let's do the other two channels, green and blue. So now I'm gonna go to the curves and go to the green channel. And I'll do the same thing here. Let's see. Looks like I might've already done this, but all right, let's reset these really quick. All right, let's take the dark, the, the darkest eyedropper right here, the black dropper, and do the same thing. Hold down Alt, move the slider, look for a point turning black. Probably gonna be that same point down there by her hip again. So we'll probably grab one of these spots right here. Let's go with this spot right here. Okay, now we'll take the white eyedropper and the white slider, hold down Alt, start sliding it, and it'll turn green. Looks like it's a little bright point of her, the sequins on her tail. Okay, there's one right there. I'm gonna click in here. And that's set our greens. And now I'm gonna go to the blue channel. Might have already done that one too, so I'll reset it. Here's the blue channel. And we'll start with the blacks, hold down Alt. You'll notice that I'm ignoring the black all the way around the edge of the frame because that's actually off of the negative where it got scanned. The, the slide only goes up to this curved edge right here. So these blacks all the way around the edges don't actually count. All right, so holding down Alt, looking for that dark spot by your hip again. Let's try to find which one starts first right down here maybe okay now we'll get the get the lightest values of the blue channel and that's going to be looks like those sequins on her tail again so let's just click in here all right okay here's the finished result of doing white balance with the curves by setting the, the lows and the highs of red, green, and blue curves channels individually. Here's our starting image, and then here's our white balance. There's other ways to do white balance, but this is a really effective one when your white balance is pretty screwed up. So for example, I could have tried to just do a regular click on a gray spot white balance. Let's try to do that with camera raw. We'll go up here. <clears throat> You'll notice I made a new layer just to play around with. So on this new layer, we'll go filter, camera raw filter. And let's let camera raw try to decide the color balance. So let's try to find a neutral thing in this image and see if we can find it. So not the hose, not one of the fish, uh, maybe a spot on her skirt, no. So. There's, there's almost, because the entire image was already magenta, there's almost nowhere we can pick that's going to give us a reasonable color balance. Um, so you're, if you're trying to do color balance with a one-click method, uh, you're basically going to be stuck. It's, it's never going to end up looking normal no matter how you try to adjust the sliders. Like I can try to bring the magentas down by hand. You know, I can try to adjust the, the color temperature by hand, but 
it still looks pretty weird. So we're not gonna do it that way. All right, get rid of that layer. <clears throat> All right, so what we've got now is a pretty decent looking version. Although I think it could still shift a little bit. Like she still looks a little bit pink. Her skin tones look a little bit pink. The image is sort of dark. So let's just do something really simple. Let's take a hue saturation layer. And on this hue saturation layer, let's just shift it around and see what looks a little bit more natural to our eyes. So I'm gonna grab this hue slider and we can see if we take it to the left, she starts looking more pink. And if we take it to the right, it starts adding some warmth. So it takes that magenta and that red out of her skin and starts getting it a little bit more orange, a little bit more yellow. And I think that will probably help out a little bit. So let's just set the hue at about 10. I think that helped a little bit. I'll click that on and off. You can see it. So you can see it made her, it made her shirt, her suit a lot more yellow. It made her skin a little bit warmer and it made the overall image just a little warmer. Okay. So that's the color starting to look pretty good. Um, now I think we could brighten up the image. And when I brighten up the images, I like to work in camera raw because it lets you know when you're starting to really mess things up. So let's make, let's take everything we've done so far and clone stamp it, which is gonna be Control Alt Shift E. And that's gonna produce a new layer, which is everything else we've done so far flattened into one layer. All right, on this new layer, to use camera raw filter, I'm going to go to filter, camera raw filter. And if you use Lightroom, you'll probably be really familiar with this. So we've just got the basic stuff like exposure, contrast, shadows, whites, blacks. Um, you can see we've got the low and the highlight alerts right now. It's telling us with this blue border that all of that is clipped out into black which is okay because that was beyond the border of the skin. And if we were to do something like increase the whites a lot, we would have these nice highlight warnings which are gonna show us where we've gone too far. So basically we want to add some brightness to her. And so usually I start by bringing up the shadows just to get that shadow detail out from being too low. If you look at the histogram, right now everything is way too far to the left. So let's just start playing. Let's just crank things around. Let's bring the exposure way up. Let's make it one, increase the stop of exposure. She's starting to look really good. We'll get details in the bottom, in the bottom, uh, the low end of stuff. Now I, I have brought up some lows, but probably don't need them too much. I'll leave, I'll put that back at zero. Depending on your taste, you could bring her highlights down so that as you increase the overall exposure, you keep her from clipping. So I'd, I'd like to have my image nice and bright because it makes it easier to print if you wanna go that way. And as you bring up the exposure, you have a chance to clip some of those highlights. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down, down to about negative 60, even as I bring the overall exposure up. And so she's looking pretty bright right now. I like, the, uh, I like the tone of the image. Um, we're probably gonna apply a gradient filter or maybe a, a LUT, which is a lookup table. I'll show you that in a minute. And anytime we're gonna color grade an image later, I generally don't like to have a lot of contrast in the beginning. So we could add contrast here, but if we color tone it later, that's also gonna add contrast. So I think I'll let the contrast be kind of low at this stage. Now, if you look at our histogram, it's starting to look a lot better. We've got a better balance of tones. Um, it's still a little bit to the left of, of right in the middle, but that's okay. There's some dark stuff here and, and she's looking nice and bright. So I like all that. Let's take a quick look at the hue, saturation, luminance adjustments. This is gonna be related to each of the colors in the image. So for example, her swimsuit here is all yellow. And if I adjusted just the brightness of the yellow. Oh, maybe it's not yellow. All right. <laughs> Let's try another slider here. Um, yeah. Okay. So her suit is mostly in the orange channels. So if I adjust the luminance, it's going to adjust 
the luminance of her suit. So if that was too bright, I could bring it down individually. It has a little bit of effect on her skin and on her hair, on her tail a little bit, that's kind of nice. Um, but I think she's pretty good right where she is, so we'll just leave it. And then the reds, you can see that she still has some red in her skin. So if we wanted to bring up just her skin, we could do that with the red channel. So we might bring up her skin a little bit and bring down her suit just a little bit to make things nice and even. Let's see if we've got any other colors in here. The aquas aren't doing much. The blues aren't doing very much. Now the background here is being influenced by purple. Um, I don't especially want the background to be bright because it's kind of distracting. So we'll just leave it where it is. And then the magentas are also in the background. I think they're okay too, so we'll just leave those. And are there any greens? Not really. So this image is in, in heat saturation and luminance. <clears throat> this image is mostly going to be uh, reds, oranges, and yellows, and some purples and magentas. It's kind of funny, but that's just how the original file is. So, Okay, so I like this. It's, it's nice and bright. It looks good. And uh, let me click this on and off. So what looked good before, when you actually add some brightness to it, you realize just how dark it really was. So um, now this is really starting to look lit up. And of course, this is a slide. So when you put the slide in your projector, back in the back in the days, you'd put it in your projector and it would be shooting this super bright image out onto the wall or a projector screen. And so it would look a lot brighter, more like this. You can look at darker images like this on a computer on your phone if your monitor or your screen brightness is cranked up, but it'll never print well if it's this dark. And generally it just looks better with a nice even looking histogram here and everything being brighter. Okay, are there any defects in the film that we need to deal with at this point? Because this is old film and it degrades a little bit, sometimes there are some little blobs and things that we have to take care of. So let's look around now. You see these little pieces of turquoise colored goop right here. There's one on this fish. There's some little blobs and spots. These are all over the image. And these are um, this is where the film is degrading. This is where little pieces of dirt or stuff have started to degrade and these spots are actually on the film. And fortunately with modern technology we can just take some <clears throat> we can just take our healing tool and brush a lot of that stuff out. So I'm gonna switch over to my tablet, my Wacom tablet, because it's a little faster for this. I've got my left hand on the keyboard and my right hand on the tablet, so I can I can do brush strokes and move the, move the tablet with precision to get to all these little things, and then use the modifier keys like Alt and Space and Control so I can zoom and move quickly. All right, so let's zoom in, and we'll just brush out some of these things with the simple spot removal tool. It's the spot healing brush tool, the, the basic one that makes the decisions for you. So I've got a pretty small brush because I don't want to affect much more than the area that I'm trying to fix. So I'm gonna go through the image, find all these green spots, and any, anything that's really visible when you're zoomed out, I'm gonna go ahead and just brush those out. So. Now that we're looking at the image pretty closely, you can see that this stuff is, is actually everywhere. Um, we're zoomed in pretty far, so it, it's not gonna be that noticeable when you're zoomed out, but if you do make a print and you make this any bigger than, say, a five by seven, you probably would see all this junk. Also, the white spots on the film, if you see any just plain white spots like, uh, say this one right here, there's ch chances are like sh there's some bubbles up here by your hand from the fish and some fish food. But when you shoot film and you do, when you do the developing process like up here, this is definitely from dust when the film was developed. So this is a this is a dust spot. There might have been dust on the film when they took the photo 
or there might have been dust on the film when they created the original slides. But any any spots that are a bright, strictly bright white, those are dust spots, and so I will take those out too. So let's continue to get this green stuff. And uh, there's some. Let's look around. all over the place. You can see all the nice grain from the original film. It's actually a pretty fine grain, but one of the problems with film and with grain is that you can't really sharpen it because digital images are so clean and have so little grain that they sharpen really well. But a film image like this, if you tried to apply traditional methods of sharpening to it, it would just increase that grain until it would just start to look really, really gritty. And it, it doesn't look so good. It, it looks nice the way it is, but uh, you can't really sharpen it any more than it already is. All right, so doing pretty good. There's another bad one there. I'm not being super careful about these because they're gonna be kind of lost in the in the grain and the detail of the image. The main thing is that the the weird green color stands out, so I just need to eliminate the really obvious spots, especially the lines. There's one. There's a whole bunch up here. Look at this. Yeah. With really big pieces you don't want to take the entire thing out at once with a healing tool. It's better to brush it in small strokes, a little chunk at a time. Let's see if there's anything else like that. Like here's a line. So instead of doing this whole line, I'll just just brush out little pieces of it. Piece in her hair. Okay. Looks pretty. Oh, I missed a few more up there. Did I get them all? To get all the obvious pieces. Yeah. Okay. So there's no really obvious green spots. So we've taken care of most of the defects in the original film. So I think it's looking pretty good. It's likely that this is fairly close to how the original looked. Now we haven't really bumped up the contrast yet. So one step to just give it some some pop is we can hit the contrast, but contrast also does uh, saturation and, and we still have some weird colors. So contrast might make it look a little weird. Um, and I can tell you that these colors you're seeing now, they're, they're not mythical film colors. These are color shifts, uh, which happen from the degradation of film over time. So I don't think I want to do contrast. Uh, instead, what I might do is something like maybe a gradient map with a soft light style overlay. And let's, uh, I, have some, I have some gradient maps here for photographic toning. Now, a gradient map takes the, the uh, pixels in the image and then just applies a color to them based on how bright they are. So if I take this this gradient map right here, uh, you can see that it's it's kind of a magenta color. So it's going to make anything that's kind of dark is going to be a dark magenta. Anything that's kind of bright is going to be a bright magenta. But <laughs> that's that's what we just fixed. So we don't want to go that way. But <clears throat> you know, if we if we did a blue color, it might look like it's underwater. Um, if we did a, if we wanted to warm it up, we could use a, even more, we could use one of these um, platinum or or uh, sepia tones to warm it up. Like I think that looks pretty nice. It's sort of golden, has a nice look to it. But instead, there's something I've been doing lately, and I really like it. It's applying a a LUT a lookup table. So down here in the adjustments, we've got the color lookup. And color lookup takes all the colors in the image and just remaps them according to some presets that other people have made. So, so I've added this color lookup adjustment layer. 
And right here where it says load 3D LUT, I'm going to look under this drop down, and there's some, some options here like tension green. If you think of the matrix, um, everything in the matrix was kind of green. So this has mapped everything to a green color. Or um, let's see, maybe bleach, well, that looks terrible. Bleach bypass is a type of film processing. We don't want that though. Um, crisp winter, so it's it's sort of mapped to a blue color. But what I really like about this is that there are some film simulations that are pretty nice. Uh, and they generally up the contrast a little bit and they make everything brighter, which is why I had a low contrast earlier. And then always we're gonna turn down the opacity of this layer so the effect is not as bright. But let's look at how some of these look. This one's called film stock. And don't worry about the specific ones I'm using. There's some built into Photoshop, but you can also go online and find like 30 free LUTs for free, or here's my favorite stuff. You can buy them from your favorite artists. Um, you can download hundreds of them for free. They're basically just presets. So let's let's try some of the Adobe ones, which are modeled after Fuji and Kodak film stock. So this is Fuji Eterna. Uh, let's see. There's different. the The different Fuji and Kodaks are based on slightly different uh, Kodak and Fuji films. Some of them are are brighter or higher or lower contrast than each other. And what you're sort of doing is just looking for one that you like the look of. Uh, so I didn't see any Fujis that I liked. Let's look at the Kodak ones, which can tend to be really warm. Sometimes these Kodak presets really do add a cool look to your image. So let's see, Kodak. I don't especially like any of those, but I did like this first Fuji preset. So just here to show you. So slightly lower contrast, and with this Fuji preset, it's really warmed up everything a little bit. Uh, it's added some contrast in the lower end of stuff. If I turn down the opacity and turn it back up, you can see it, it really gives it a particular style. Now we, we wanna be careful that we don't clip anything too hard, add too much contrast to the low end. If you look at the histogram, right now we're squashing some blacks off the low end of the histogram and we kind of want to avoid that it looks like we oh that's those blacks are the edge those are the border so that's okay but anyway I kind of like the way this looks right here let's look at this in comparison to just a, a layer of extra contrast so let's add that contrast adjustment layer back in that I had earlier so here's a here's just a cranked up contrast and here's a color lookup table. So the contrast brings out a bunch of these weird colors in the background. And it does add contrast, but at the expense of color accuracy and some strange saturation where this color lookup table gives us a little bit of a boost to the image, but it's it's not really increasing the saturation so much. So, so I've really enjoyed using these color lookup tables lately. Um, this image started off so strangely that it's, it's hard to really see the full effect, but if you take a, a regular image or a portrait you've taken with a digital camera and you start applying those, uh, those loot presets, um, some of them can be really nice. So, so here's this image. I think it's looking pretty good just how it is. Um, you could take it in some crazy direction, but right now I don't want to shift it too far from how it started. One of the last things that I'll do is I'll apply a levels adjustment. Let's delete that contrast layer we didn't use. I'll apply a levels adjustment just to make sure we've brought everything up to the very edges of the histogram without clipping them. So if we click on these triangles on the levels adjustment down here and hold down the Alt key and start moving them, we can see where we start pushing things into white and start clipping stuff out. So if we bring it too far down, her shoulders and her arms start clipping out, and we really want to avoid that. So I will add in a little bit of levels, but avoid clipping anything severely. So let's just 
we can just see the red channel starting to get kind of high in different places, and that's good for me. And then in the dark side of the images, usually I leave that alone because you can't print an image that goes below 30 or 40 luminance. Now it might look good on screen, but it, it definitely will not look so good on print. So, so while you can bring up the blacks and add some stuff on the bottom end of the image, I'm probably gonna avoid that. I'm just gonna bring it up enough so that this exterior, which is supposed to be black, the, the border of the image that was off the scan is, is totally a black border. Okay, so it's almost imperceptible. If I, if I turn this levels on and off, you can see it just adds a little bit of um, brightness and a little bit of darker blacks to the image. So I think we're looking pretty good. We've got that nice looking mermaid there. We've taken out the defects in the film. Her tail's looking beautiful and vibrant and we've restored the yellows. Now let's go back to our original image and see just what we've done here. Yeah, look at that. Everything looks so vibrant and colorful now, and it was awful in the beginning. Let's look at the two of these side by side. So I'll go here and I'll duplicate this layer, and then I'll just bring them both up in the same window. All right. And now let's make one of them, let's make this one show the original. This one show the modifications. Okay, there we go. So here they are side by side. Quite, oops, quite a difference. A pretty huge difference right there. So there is a lot of information still contained in the film even if it's degrading with nice tools right now like Photoshop, you can still bring out these great looking images from old film. It's important to do this because that film, after much longer, you know, if you threw this back in the archive or in the cabinet in another 20 or 30 years, it might be gone so far that you won't be able to get anything out of it. So it's, it's mainly because it's cheap film originally, but Film does not last forever, so it's nice to archive these things before they've gone too far. So there it is, a lovely mermaid of Wikiwachi, and hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I guess it was sort of a tutorial, and enjoyed looking at the mermaid up here in all her glory again. So thanks for tuning in. We'll try some more, restoring some more film in future episodes.